Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Kathy Wood releases a brand new exchange traded fund tomorrow, or since you might be watching this tomorrow, on March 30th of 2021. And that is ARC X, the Space and Innovation Exchange Traded Fund. Where the heck can you buy it? Well, you could generally buy it anywhere you could buy stocks. See, ETFs are publicly traded as if they're one stock, but they're really just a collection of stocks. It's kind of like a basket of stocks, kind of like an index fund, except it's an actively traded fund, which just means that rather than tracking the same stocks pretty much all the time, Kathy Wood gets to decide what stocks go in the basket. <laughs> and so this fund promises to put 80% of their holdings and money into things related to space exploration and innovation. So basically anything they want. <laughs> Now, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through the, the, some of the top holdings in this fund, and then you'll get a better understanding of what the heck uh, this fund is all about. I'll also go through some of the earnings, and I'll go through this in a concise way, just so you get an idea of if you're interested in investing in the ARK X fund. I, I want you to, in my opinion, be aware of what you're getting into because it might not be exactly what you're expecting, but it could be good if you're expecting the right thing. So let's let's show you exactly what you should be expecting. <laughs> okay, so uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I just wanna point out, look, you've probably seen this before at this point if you're interested in ARK Invest. I'm not gonna hang out on this the entire time. In fact, I've got an entire kind of a flow chart that we're gonna go through here, breaking down some of the top companies in here. For example, we'll break down what the heck is this Trimble? What is this Trimble that 8.47% of my money is going into? What is this 3D printing ETF? Oh, they make 3D printing printed stuff? Okay, cool, but who even makes that ETF? ETF, uh, hint, hint, Kathy. <laughs> so Kathy's putting your ETF money that goes into ARCX into another one of her ETFs. Kind of brilliant marketing, honestly, I have to say. But, <laughs> but anyway, then you've got, you know, defense contractors in here, but you've also got things like NVIDIA and John Deere and Amazon and Google and Garmin, the GPS manufacturer. And if you keep scrolling enough, you'll even see things over here like Netflix and... <laughs> You'll even see Tencent over here, uh, as well as Workhorse, which just lost their USPS contract to Oshkosh. So you've kind of got a little bit of a, a hodgepodge when you first look at this. It's like, wait a minute, how do these all connect together? Like, I want spaceships and like intergalactic warfare products. Notice that's different from intergalactic warfare. I don't really want that, but products related to that that make money, hey, sounds good to me. Okay, so uh, easiest thing to do here is just start at the top and let's grind through this. Uh, in order to grind through this, I have to say, you're gonna wanna make sure you sign up for two free stocks with Weeble. Go to metkevin.com slash Weeble, get two totally free stocks. You deposit a hundred bucks. It's the same platform I use every day when I do my market open and market close live streams. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, so Trimble, you know the company Google SketchUp or that app, Google SketchUp? A lot of you may have heard of that before. You kind of use it to usually like design like your backyard or your house or whatever you want. Well, Trimble bought Google SketchUp and that kind of gives you an idea of Trimble a little bit. They were work a lot in building and construction. In fact, 40% of their money comes or their revenue comes from civil engineering, commercial and industrial building. 25% comes from trucking and 20% comes from geospatial things, which is kind of like surveying. They make their own GPS products. They make their own lasers for surveying, uh, all their own optics and wireless communication devices. So you can see kind of like the bulk of their existing book of business is kind of just like regular construction related things. But a small part of their business does have to do with GPS and tracking vehicles and logistics. And one of the themes that I want you to kind of like put into your memory bank as we go through this is existing businesses that are lower on the risk scale, that are more established, but have like these small little embers or flames inside of them that could explode into really profitable space related industries in the future, maybe 10 to 20 years in the future. So keep keep that sort of in the back of your mind and then see if you kind of agree with that, okay? So that this is Trimble. 
Right now, uh, over the last five years, they've been increasing their revenue, except for in 2020 when they had a 3.6% decline. They're kind of growing at like a 7 to 8% clip, so not like really crazy much, but they've only got 1% short interest. Like nobody's shorting this company. Nobody actually expects this mature company to go anywhere. It's, it's a really mature anchor, right? Low bankruptcy risk, uh, lots lots of cash. But then I got to my thing, I think to myself like, wait, what do they have to do with space? And I thought, ah, you know, the best thing I can really think of here is is really lasers and, and, and surveying equipment and, and that GPS tracking uh, for logistics maybe in the future. So so we'll see. Okay, uh, then we've got, uh, the next thing is the, the next biggest holding. So this right here was an 8.47% holding. The next biggest holding was 6.1%. And this was the 3D printing ETF, which is actually another ARK Invest fund, which do keep in mind most of Kathy's funds have an expense ratio, which you could read all about on their website of about uh, a quarter, or I'm sorry, three quarters of 1%. So that means for every $100 you're investing uh, into uh, one of Kathy Wood's funds, uh, you're giving about 75 cents to Kathy Wood. So for every $100, 75 cents is going to Kathy. Okay, so uh, this is another ARC fund here. So the space exploration one and innovation fund is, is 0.75. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, 3D printed one is, but although I'm pretty sure it's similar. Uh, the biggest holding in the 3D printed fund is Exone, which it makes up about 8.3% of the 3D printed fund. What I did though is I kind of just indicated them as a relation to the size in the space innovation fund. So really of the money you're putting into the space innovation fund, you're only getting about half percent exposure to zone. And then the other ones in the printing EDF, uh, ETF, you're getting like a third percent exposure. So in other words, if you put like $100 into the space ETF, you're getting uh, 50 cents going to zone. And they do 3D printed machines for industrial customers. They're projected to grow their revenue actually by a good amount, but they are losing money. They make 3D printed in-house machines. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Nano Dimension. They got Hewlett Packard over here, third of 1%. So really for every $100 you're putting into Kathy's fund, you're really only seeing 33 cents go into HP, 33 cents going into approximately, I'm, I'm really rounding here, into Straumann. Straumann does like 3D printed dental implants and things like that. Like I got, I got a little lost in terms of why the 3D printed section is so high, but it is. We've got uh, Rene Shaw. This is, uh, I believe this was a, uh, this is, a, oh yeah, here we go. So this is a precision measuring and calibration company. So they try to make sure that your machinery operates as perfectly as it can. So the way I picture that is like, if you have a machine that's etching, uh, like maybe a 3D printer that's etching a 3D printed circuit board, you wanna make sure that your 3D printer is properly calibrated and this company can help you manufacture it or, or basically have those tools. So they manufacture those tools to make sure that your products are accurate. Microsoft, uh, and then you got another little bit of Trimbles in here. So the second line in the ARC ETF a little bit threw me off because it's the 3D printing ETF, right? And then you kind of have like this miscellaneous hodgepodge of, of 3D printing companies. But then we get to the interesting ones. So then we get to Kratos Defense. So they do a lot of IT for the government. In fact, 80% of their sales come from the government. They also deal with microwave electronic products, space training, cybersecurity, rocket support services, defense services, uh, defense communications, and more. So if you put $100 into this ARC innovation and space ETF, you're putting, just to make this as simple as possible, you're putting about $8.47 into Trimble. That's that commercial civil engineering one that also does a little bit of the GPS, lasers and stuff like that. Uh, $6.1 are going into like these miscellaneous kind of 3D printers. Then you've got a $5.62 for every $100 going into this one. Now, one of the things that's cool here, and I think this is probably where the, the long hope is, is they do a lot of work on UAV products. In fact, a lot of these companies, if you go to their website, the first thing, like if you type into Google Kratos Defense, are like these, these spacey Starcraft-ish looking airplanes that are like uh, uh, un unmanned planes. And it kind of makes me think of like Starcraft Warfare a little bit. Uh, and, and I think that's kind of like what they're trying to show off. Like, oh yeah, we might be like, an old school defense company, but don't worry, we can innovate as well and we can get you drones that can fight in the sky. <laughs> uh, De Department of Defense is, is basically their biggest play, uh, payer. 40% of their revenue comes from products, uh, I'm sorry, 60% comes from products, 40% from services. 
Uh, they also have uh, satellite related products and services like they do chips that go into missile guidance systems. I mean, some of this stuff is pretty intense. In fact, uh, I kind of thought about this company as like, this is my intergalactic warfare company. Like, yeah, my missiles, my targeting systems, uh, my, my UAVs that could go fly around and, and be like my swarm that I release when I push a button and go fight people in the sky. I know that sounds a little childish, but like that's literally how I'm simplifying like a potential future for this company. Hope we don't need it, but yeah. A forward PE of roughly 52, one of the more expensive stocks out of this whole fund. So uh, out of your $100, your next $4.97 uh, would be going into the sixth largest defense contractor. And this company, uh, L3 Harris, they do a lot of TACCOM stuff. So tactical communications, uh, radio communications for land, sea, air, space, and, and cyber, <laughs> they said that. 30% of their revenue comes from intelligence and recon, like advanced uh, sensors, surveillance systems, targeting systems, infrared targeting, uh, space and airborne uh, borne segments are 25%. And that's kind of cool that they broke that out that way. I think a lot of people want to hear that, okay, yeah, how, how much is space related, right? Uh, and that's 25% of L3 Harris's space related. Complete earth observation is the way they put that. So positioning, antennas, I imagine satellites. These defense companies are really a little bit vague sometimes. <laughs> and maybe it's because they just do so many different things. But they also provide the next gen warfare systems for F-16s. Like this really makes me feel like very Tony Starkish. Uh, you know, I gotta get my missiles and kind of deliver those missiles. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's a little bit what these all feel like, right? Uh, they're also discussing plans for like autonomous, uh, autonomous ships with like solar panels and they can like basically drive themselves, these autonomous ships without a crew. I, I don't know, they, there's some interesting things. Their revenue grew like 100% in 2019, probably because they got a big fat contract uh, and it's expected to grow only three to 5% over the next two years. So this is usually what happens with these big contracts, like their revenue goes through the roof and then, and then they kind of fulfill their contract, right? Selling for about 18 times 2022 earnings. JD.com, so I have to say this one threw me off a little bit. This reminds me of like a blend between like an Etsy and an Amazon.com in China. So they sell like appliances, computers, maybe it's more like a Walmart, I, I don't know. Digital products, clothing, so people in China. Uh, the, the EPS is estimated to be uh, $2.75 in 2022. So you've, you're paying like about 30 times future earnings here. Uh, you know, a lot of these companies actually surprisingly low PE ratios. And it's in my opinion, it's because you're really getting like these mature companies with the potential to, to grow uh, into space. I don't know about JD.com. Honestly, why $4.91 is going into the space fund, I, I have no clue. But then again, remember this is the space and innovation fund. And when you make an ETF, you do wanna have some balance too, right? Like, yeah, 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 these are gonna be our space winners. But in the meantime, we gotta have some winners up front too. And that's kind of why I think you'll also see like the Amazon, the Google and the Netflix. It's like, maybe those can be our winners between 2020, uh, one and like 2025, and then maybe our space stuff will start emerging and hatching, so to speak. Okay, uh, then we've got uh, Komatsu. This would be your next four dollars and fifty-six cents, and this is a Japanese. This is kind of, in my opinion, like a Japanese John Deere, or maybe like a plug power slash John Deere, because they make forklifts, excavators, bulldozers, or maybe even like a caterpillar. So kind of blend like caterpillar plug and John Deere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, construction and mining equipment, or maybe more Caterpillar, probably more Caterpillar. But anyway, uh, their revenue declined about 15% in 2020, and they're expected to decline through the first part of 2021, so probably very COVID related. Uh, well, yeah, I wrote due to COVID, uh, and they are expecting about 10% growth in 2022. You're paying about 20 times 2022 earnings for this one. You know, I, I guess you need excavators if you go land on the moon or Mars too, so, you know, m m maybe. Anywho, then we've got Lockheed Martin, one of the biggest uh, global military contractors. 4.47 of your $100 would go into Lockheed Martin. The uh, US government provides 71% of revenue for this company. They make aircrafts, UAVs, helicopters, satellites, spaceships, ships, uh, spacecraft, I guess they said. Okay, so because maybe like vessels that bring satellites to the sky or, or to, the, to space. Ships, subs, missiles, missile defenses, F-35s, F-35 fighter jets, by the way, make up 25% of this company's sales. 40% uh, are all aeronautics related with the C uh, C-130 also being produced by Lockheed Martin. I've been in a C-130 and those things are awesome. 
Uh, it's like a transport plane. I, I'm not sure. I think you can you could probably have a C-130 bomber as well. I'm not. I'm not actually not. We should look that up really quick. Oh, could you have a C-130 bomber? C-130 bomber. Let's see. Uh, C-130. Yeah, you can. Nailed it. Check it out, folks. Freaking nailed it. C-130 is either a, a cargo, medevac, troop transport, but also possibly a bomber. <laughs> okay, uh, very, very cool. Uh, at least that's what comes up when you type in C-130 bomber. Oh, look at that, Lockheed AC-130 gunship, heavily armed, Hercules. Oh, freaking awesome. Uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, okay. So uh, of uh, uh, of your $100, $4.47 are going into Lockheed Martin, and of that, uh, $4.47 times 0.4, about $1.76, Eight of every one hundred dollars you're investing goes into basically the revenue of like those C-130 bombers and transport planes. Uh, anywho, that's very cool. Twenty-five percent of their revenue though is space related. So this is again where you can see a little bit of that hatchling of space. Remember the theme: hatchling of space with some other stuff like that that Chinese retailer and Netflix and Google and and stuff like that. Uh, and, and John Deere, which John Deere's in here as well. But anyway, uh, $73 billion of projected 2023 revenue, which is 3.7% growth. Uh, net income is actually 11% projected margin. Down a little bit, but actually pretty good margin, honestly, for Lockheed Martin. Very low future forward price to earnings ratio, 12.61, uh, uh, which is pretty dang low, uh, mostly because a limited growth. I mean, this is law of large numbers here. These guys do like 70 plus billion billion or, or will, that's the projection, is to do over $70 billion of, uh, of sales, which is just like oh, huge, huge number uh, of sales. Like, let's, let's look at Apple's revenue here really quick. Let's just type this in. Apple revenue. Apple revenue is $111 billion. And like we said, Lockheed Martin, just to compare, revenue uh, right now is... $59.8 billion projected to go up to $70 billion in the future. So those are some big numbers, law of large numbers for sure. Then we've got Iridium Communications. So they do mobile satellite services, low earth satellites, voice and data services. Basically the best analogy I found was if you wanna make a phone call from the North Pole because you're like a stranded soldier, you probably use Iridium related products. Or if you wanna send a missile to that stranded person, you probably would use Iridium communication <laughs> services. Main customer is the US government. Boeing operates and maintains Iridium satellite system. 80% of revenue comes from mobile voice and data services. So I guess only eight, I guess 80% is more voice and, and data services. Maybe 20% is missiles. Yeah, missiles. Uh, anyway, not quite profitable yet, growing about 4 to 7% per year. Remember, the growth rates are really skewed at these companies though, because all it takes is a big fat contract uh, from, from the government. Thales SA. So this was probably uh, a, one of my more challenging ones to really understand what's going on here. They do a lot of, uh, oh, so first of all, $3.90 of your $100 would go into this one. They do a lot of like air traffic control related products. So I'm imagining like radar and comm products when you're looking at like the front of an airplane or air traffic control. But their website really pitches like everything. Like they have products on algorithms for AI, crowd management, autonomous trains, driverless trains, I guess it's the same thing, uh, lo lots of things. And they wanna grow into space communications. Like they're, they're basically already trying to work with like NASA to incorporate some of their comm parts or hardware and software products. 20% of their money goes into R&D. So, you know, they've, they're trying to really find find their place, it seems like. Seems like they really have their place in aeronautics communications. Maybe that reputation will carry over to space-related communications, which is why they're kind of starting to work with NASA, it seems like. And you've got Boeing's in here. So out of every $100 you put in, 3.48 goes into Boeing. Uh, Boeing makes Apache helicopters, missiles, munitions, spacecraft, transporters. I mean, they make a ton of crap like only 30% of their sales are things like the Boeing 747 or the, the Air Max or, or whatever, uh, you know, the plane that had the issues, the 737 Max, not the Air Max. I'm thinking of like the, the Apple products, the headphones. Sorry, anywho, defense, space, military, security uh, actually makes up 45% of their revenue. So when you hear Boeing, almost half comes from the defense department. 
uh, actually probably more because if you include 25% aerospace defense and then 25% for just defense and security and missiles and munitions, I mean, actually, when you add it up like that, that's like 70% is coming from the government here, basically. And the 30% are those commercial plane sales. You're paying about 43 times 2022 revenues. Uh, obviously had a rough 2020, but that's expected to come back in 2021. And then we'll go back to normal growth of a, a, just a little under 10% per year is the expectation. NVIDIA's in here, which is another one of those kind of hatchling companies where you're like, come on, like their graphic processing units make up 85% of the company's revenue. Gaming is 50% of the whole total. But they do have this AI and vehicle autonomous segment, which right now only makes up like 10% of revenue. But hey, that could explode. Right now you're paying about 35 times future 2023 earnings for this company. Spirit Aerosystems, uh, this is a holding company and they make fuselages and wings and motors and engines for planes. Like for example, Boeing apparently doesn't actually make their own fuselages. Spirit Aerosystems makes them for Boeing. Thought that was cool. John Deere, think farm and turf equipment harvesters. 65% of their stuff is for agriculture turf, 25% forestry and construction. Uh, they also have a little portion that goes to like military style tractors and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know why $3.1 uh, of my money are going into John Deere and, and the Space and Innovation Fund, but remember they said only 80% of the fund has to go to Space and Innovation. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think this falls in that 80%. Amazon, I mean, sure, you could say this falls in the in innovation stuff. We don't have to really introduce Amazon here. Teradyne manufactures machines that automate testing in manufacturing. <laughs> so they, the, the connection that I found here really is robotic arms, that they actually do industrial automation and robotic arms, but that segment is only 15% of their revenue right now. The 70% of their, their revenue comes from the uh, sales of semiconductor testing equipment. Then that tiny little part, that little ember is robotic arms. Remember this, like, I'm telling you folks, the theme of this, this uh, index fund, or not index fund, I'm sorry, the, the theme of this ETF, exchange traded fund, which yes, you could get on Robinhood, Webull, and all that. Remember, get your two free stocks with Webull. And sign up for BlockFi and get up to $250 totally for free and earn interest on your cryptocurrency, which if you do want to earn more interest, or at least like diversify to another company, check out Voyager by going to metkevin.com slash Voyager. They'll give you money for signing up over there as well. Just like BlockFi, I recommend signing up for both. Anywho, so Teradyme, uh, yeah, very, very thematic, right? Old guard companies, fledgling operations as the smaller part of their company. So serve really good industrial purposes, but also have these small parts within the company that's like, oh yeah, this is our high tech division. Like this is this is the the blooming, you know, this this part of our company is gonna be explosive. I, you know, honestly, I wish I could just do like a factory tour of all these companies and may, may, maybe then it'd be like, oh my gosh, look what they're making, <laughs> you know? Anyway, then you got Google. Uh, so 2.59 of every one of your hundred dollars goes into here. This one was huge. Dassault, Dassault, it's probably like Dassault. I, I don't know, something like that. Uh, that It's a French company. And I kind of said that like it was Japanese. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not good with accents, okay? I'm making financial related content here, okay? Anywho, uh, software to help innovation, computer aided design, software uh, makes up like 80 plus percent, I think it's like 85% of what this company does. And they've got a lot of software for supply chain issues. But honestly, when you go to their website, they just say they do everything. Like, hey, you need help for mobility, households, aerospace, transportation, industrial equipment, we got solutions for you. And I got a little overwhelmed here. <laughs> So I kind of paused on that one. We do have Garmin GPS in here. We got Virgin Galactic in here, each at about two bucks. Uh, and so this, this, you know, then we kind of go into the smaller holdings. Uh, some of the smaller ones again, I mean, we got like Workhorse in here. Now we're getting into the really smaller ones like Alibaba's in here, Airbus is in here, uh, Honeywell for, for maybe, um, you know, filtration for space related technologies. Uh, HVAC, right? Heating, heating and air conditioning. Ten cent holdings is in here. Uh, anywho, uh, so you, you've got you've got a lot of uh, additional companies in here. The big thing to take away here is is simply this, and this is sort of my takeaway. So make your own thoughts thoughts obviously here, but this is my takeaway. My takeaway is this is a very long tail ETF with 
some current hot stocks included to maybe try to bump the returns in the short term. Like let's throw in Netflix and Amazon and Google to help bump the short term returns because it's probably gonna be a while for those little emerging uh, embers to, to grow and explode into like, ah, space is very, very profitable. This, it's, this is not exactly like a pure space play, right? Uh, SpaceX, for example, would be a very pure space play. This ETF to me feels a little bit like 10% space that could in 15, 20 years end up being like 80% space because all the companies have evolved into space related products uh, and, and like those products have ended up blossoming. So you're really planting those seeds here very, very, very early. Uh, but again, it's this is not a pure play like a SpaceX, but you can't buy SpaceX, right? Uh, so uh, or, or like Virgin would potentially be a little bit more of a pure play, but then again, you have a lot of risk because it's very early. So uh, very dependent on government contracts. Otherwise, like in the near term, you're very dependent on government contracts. Trimble, honestly, a really good infrastructure play, I think. It's probably a better infrastructure play than it is a, uh, f like a space play, uh, which is not gonna be bad. I mean, Biden administration wants to spend $4 trillion on infrastructure, so why not? Lots of government defense contracts here. Some randos, kind of like that JD.com, li little random, but hey, they're growing great. I mean, 20% plus per year, so. A uh, very low PE stocks in some of those developed companies, but again, they've got those little embers of growth. Uh, some kind of weird inclusions. Again, I think they're trying to just make sure they have a fund that actually just, that, that, does, like, that does grow, <laughs> that does have growth over the next few years. But I do think there is a future where this could have more explosive growth. I just don't know if I personally want to ride with this for all those years. And uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe like when SpaceX comes out, I just go all in over there. In the meantime, it's just like, uh, throw it all in on Tesla. I, I don't know. I, I personally, I'm not an ETF uh, investor. I'm a big fan of picking my own, but I have to say, I mean, like out of the stocks here, are there some that I would pick that, that I hadn't thought of before? Yeah, actually probably, yeah, here, take a look at this. Uh, I'll, I'll highlight these in red. Honestly, Trimble, kind of not bad. I, I liked what I read about Trimble, kind of like that one. Uh, you know, quite frankly, like if I was going to get into some of these, like the Lockheed Martin or the Kratos and the L3, like if I was gonna get into these defense contractors, I mean, they're they're inexpensive, uh, and they've got uh, they've got that little potential uh, to really explode. You know, I mean, even even Teradyne was interesting. Uh, Spirit Aerosystems, the fuselage company. I, 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 don't know, I don't know much about. I don't know much about whose fuselage is better. I, I honestly, I don't want to compare fuselages. Okay, like, oh, what their fuselage is longer, theirs is thicker. I mean, like, I. Anyway. Uh, you know, I mean, I like NVIDIA, right? Obviously, I like Amazon, uh, you know. I mean, I like lots of these guys. I, I don't know about Workhorse. I kind of feel like Workhorse needs a little bit of a pump. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that's why it's in this, but, you know. <laughs> Anywho, I'll just end it there. How about that? So if you found this helpful, this breakdown on what's in this and uh, what, what my opinion is of what you're getting, consider sharing this video, consider subscribing, get your free money with Voyager by going to metkevin.com slash Voyager, metkevin.com slash BF for BlockFi, metkevin.com slash Weeble for Weeble, and go get yourself some free stuff. And if any of this stresses you out, just go to metkevin.com slash life and get life insurance in as little as five minutes. And you don't have to talk to anyone either. All right, thanks for watching folks, bye.